All the big scary headlines and the news articles that say red meat causes cancer, they are forgetting one key thing and that is Hey guys, welcome to part four on the relationship of meat to heart disease risk and cancer. This one is all about the relationship of meat to cancer. Now, if you look at the data, you may be a little bit scared. In 2019, a paper stated that diets low in red meat consumption and processed meat consumption were associated with a 10% lower risk of cancer and an 11% reduction in risk of dying from cancer. In fact, this has been such a concerning issue over the years that the World Health Organization stepped in and you know it's bad when they step in and they formed the International Agency for Research on Cancer. And the bunch of researchers that comprise this board were told you need to go out and look at 800 studies across 12 different types of cancer and determine what the hell is going on. Can you please tell us whether red meat consumption and processed meat consumption may increase your risk of cancer? You go and find out, look at all these studies. Um, I love reading studies, but 800 studies, wow. So I really hope these poor guys were paid bloody well. But what did they find? Well, very high levels of red meat intake were associated with an increased risk of colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, and prostate cancer. And yet the evidence was insufficient to determine whether red meat and processed meat consumption increased the cancers of the esophagus, the breast, the liver, the thyroid, the stomach, the testicles, the kidney, the bladder, the ovary, the endometrium, the brain, and the blood. Now, a lot of scientists said, wait a second, this is not true data because a lot of these studies were poorly designed or they were observational in nature and people were thinking, well, an observational study, as I explained in part one of this video series, is not the highest quality evidence because observational studies have a problem in that the researchers can't directly manipulate the variables they want to find in a cohort of people that they choose. In that observational, all you can really do is either look forward or back in time and see what's going on, but you don't have direct ability to manipulate the variables that you want. But then for cancer, the only real option is observational because like I explained in part one, setting up a study for cancer that goes for many, many years because you know cancer takes decades to manifest itself in the human body often, that's not really going to be viable. No one's going to sign up for a study that takes 20 years or 30 years to complete because people you know, want to live their lives. They don't wanna be signed up for a study for the rest of their lives on the off chance that they may get cancer at the end of it. And so for the long latency diseases like cancer, really the only best option that we have is observational. Now, there are currently 29 studies out for the relationship between red meat and cancer. And 14 of these, 29, found positive associations between red meat consumption and colon cancer. And there are 27 studies for cancer and processed meat and 18 of these, so quite a large proportion of these, found an association between eating processed meat and colon cancer. Now, colon cancer seems to be the real concern. Um, out of all the research, colon cancer seems to be the one that is linked at least somewhat positively to increased amounts of red meat and processed meat. And the reason is because there are four compounds that seem to be at play in this type of cancer. And the guilty four compounds are heme iron, which gives the meat its red color, n nitroso compounds, which are found in foods, especially meat that are cured with either sodium nitrate or similar compounds, polycylic aromatic hydrocarbons, also known as PAHs for short. And the reason is because smoke contains PAHs and they stick to the meat during cooking. And the fourth and final is heterosylic amines, which are formed when the amino acids in meat react with very high temperatures, such as during cooking. And the research shows that about a 20 to 30% jump in risk is experienced for cancer, especially colon cancer, when red meat or processed meat are eaten in high quantities. In fact, for every 100 grams of red meat eaten and for every 50 grams of processed meat eaten, the research shows that there seems to be about a 17 to 18% spike in your risk of developing colon cancer. Now that seems very scary. Just for a 100 gram increase in red meat, um, you're gonna get a 17 to 18% jump in your risk of developing colon cancer for your life. That's very scary. So what is going on here? Well, the big scary headlines and the news articles that say red meat causes cancer, they are forgetting one key thing, and that is relative risk. As in the risk is relative to your baseline. So let's take a look at how that works in practice. In 2021, there will be 149,500 cases of colon cancer diagnosed. So out of the entire population of the United States of 328 million people, that's saying about 0.045% of the population will be diagnosed with colon cancer in 2021. So out of a group of 100,000 people, 45 of those will be diagnosed with colon cancer in 2021 in the United States. Now take 
taking in the relative risk of about 17 to 18%, as I said before, if all of those individuals, so all of the 45, increase their red meat consumption by 100 grams or their processed meat consumption by 50 grams, as the research says, how many more cases per 100,000 people would we get? Eight. Eight more cases. Eight more people out of 100,000 would get colon cancer if they increase their red meat consumption to the 100 gram threshold or the 50 milligram processed meat threshold. So is that a big deal? Well, if we work it out to a population level, we could expect an extra 27,000 colon cancer cases in 2021 in the United States if everyone in the whole population increased their red meat and processed meat consumption. But the big thing is, on average, most adults in the US are already eating under the recommended amount of red meat and processed meat per day. And so the eight extra cases per 100,000 people doesn't really stack up that well. The World Cancer Research Fund says people should eat between 350 to 500 grams of cooked red meat per week. And how much are people in the US and Europe eating per week? Well, they're eating about 490 on average grams of red meat per week. So it falls within range. So is the cancer risk actually justified? Well, in my opinion, no. The strongest evidence for cancer and red meat risk is specifically colon cancer and that seems to be the one cancer where the risk can be quite high if your red meat and processed meat consumption is way off the scale and yet it's not people are not eating huge amounts of red meat and processed meat. If you are, then that could be a concern and you may want to bring that down, but people generally on the whole are not. And eight cases out of 100,000 people, um, you know, I just don't think that's a big deal overall. Eight cases out of 100,000, it's a relative risk. The headlines love to say an 18% increase in cancer risk if you eat red meat. I mean, it's true with what the research says, but it's not actually true in that it's a relative risk. So it's actually like the baseline of risk is already quite low. So a 17% increase on an already low baseline is going to be still quite low. And eight people out of 100,000 for mine is not a huge concern, especially because people are not eating over on average the 500 grams per week. Now, if you are eating over 500 grams of red meat per week, it may be an idea to think about cutting this down. And like I said, in part three of this video, swapping some of these saturated fatty acids out for monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids, things like fish, nut butters, olive oils, avocados, those healthy fats, nuts. These things are the things that are a bit better for our body, actually a lot better if you look at the data for our body than saturated and trans fats. But if you're not eating over the 500 grams, then I don't think you have much to worry about in terms of meat cancer risk, especially if you're already eating it as part of a diet with a lot of fruit and vegetables and healthy fiber, and you're at a healthy body weight with enough skeletal muscle on your frame to be at a healthy muscle mass too, then I don't think that you should be overly concerned about cancer and red meat. So the next time you see a clickbait news article that says red meat is causing cancer, you can say uh, maybe, but relative risk is already quite low. So keeping you guys informed, thank you so much for watching part four. In part five, we're going to do an overall conclusion of everything and I really appreciate all the support. I'll see you then.